Okay, okay. Before anybody says anything, I know the ferry isn't there. I had to moor it out in deep water last night because the jetty was all iced up. Well, what do you think of her? She's smashing, Mr. Blair. A lot bigger than the last one. Mm -hmm. Aye. Maybe we can talk the Hedy into letting us run the next school dance on it. You'll do no such thing. There will be no shenanigans on board the Glendalough, and that is the captain telling you. Mm. Eh, 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 eh. I run a tight ship, and those who ships with me obeys orders. Age him, lad. Mm. <laughs> go on, go and get your life jackets. You can have those. Go on. I'll see you in the office in a minute. Well, good morning, Mrs. Lamon. That's the spirit. If you fall off a horse, get back on immediately. What are you talking about? Uh, well, a wee nautical mishap. I'm glad it hasn't put you off seafaring, or lock fairing, as the case may be. Believe me, if there was any other easy way of getting to a town. Well, there isn't. And you are lucky enough to be on the maiden voyage of the new ferry. I'll wait till we get to Octan. If we get to Octan, before I say anything about luck. Well, you'll have plenty of time to consider, because I've yet to get it. Mother, you're not cleaning the table before I finish my breakfast. Your plate's empty. And so am I, still. And I know you've got an extra couple of sausages in the frying pan there. Hmm? Oh, hello, Dibble. Oh, aye, it's the Pony Express. <laughs> aye. Is that your breakfast you're having? No, it's yesterday's dinner. I missed mine this morning. Oh, it's sad when something like that happens, Fergus. Still, you can watch me eating mine, and it'll maybe take the edge off your appetite. Did you just come in to say hello, Fergus, or is it maybe a, a letter you have to deliver? Uh, both. Hello, Mrs. Lachlan. Hello, Fergus. Here's a letter, Dougal. Oh, aye. Uh... Are you not going to open it? No, no, not while I'm eating. If it's bad news, I'll get wind. It's one of those bills the vet's been sending out to folk. And I've seen a few shocked faces when people have opened them. Oh, well, you're in for a disappointment if you expect to see any here. <laughs> I run my croft on a sound basis. If others don't, then it's their fault for not settling with Mr. Forsyth when the money's due. There must be some mistake. Ah, that's what they all say. I'm sure there's been a mistake, and I'm sure it's you that's made it. But by not paying his bills, Mrs. Lachlan. That's right. Must be a fair shock to find yourself presented with a bill for five hundred and fifty pounds. How did you know how much it was for? Oh, because this is where you stuck the bills when you didn't want to think about them. You needn't bother doing that. I've already done it. Five hundred and fifty pounds and sixty-four pence. <laughs> so it's flu you've got. Uh, just a touch, the doctor said. Should you be out and about? Probably not. But I've always been very active. In fact, this is the first time in years that I've been ill at all. And I suppose, well, Mrs. Mack does tend to fuss a bit. <laughs> of course, the chance of bullying an invalid is not one should be likely to pass up. She means well, I suppose. But she has these homemade potions, is the only word to describe them. Each one is more disgusting than the last. <laughs> <laughs> but she sets more store by them than the doctor's prescription. Listen, are you going to be fit enough to take the service on Sunday? I doubt if my voice will hold out, so I've arranged for Mr. Parker from Octan to take my place. Oh, well, it'll be a rare treat for us all. You remember his last appearance at Glendarroch? Could I ever forget it? And I also remember that he was trying to get hold of your church to add to the one he's already got. You make it sound like a takeover bid. Well, wasn't it? That would be taking a rather uncharitable view of it, Isabel. The presbytery simply felt that it would be more economic to link the two churches when I retired. Oh, but then they tried to force you to retire. Uh, tried to persuade me. <laughs> would Mr. Parker get paid more if he had the two calls? Well, it would certainly make a difference to his stipend. But, Isabel, I hope you're not attributing any mercenary motives to him. Oh, would I do a thing like that, Miss? Oh, morning, Isabel. Uh, oh, Mrs. McPherson. Oh, I love your hair, Alice. You don't think it's too short, do no, you? No, smashing. What do you want, Mr. Mother? I'm very, very busy. Oh, we want with you, Mrs. Mack. Mm. Um, is there any chance of a... You know... 
ignore and we should stop behaving that peculiar manner. It's very off-putting. I just wondered if there was any possibility of the minister overhearing us. Not unless it's psychic. It's gone out. Oh. Against my advice, I might tell you. That certainly wasn't wise. <laughs> Mr. Lundin, what did you want to say to me? We can speak freely then. Try speaking intelligently. That committee is supposed to be attending. The ecumenical committee. The very one. Well, what about it? It seems your worst fears have been realised, Mrs. Mack. The minister is indeed suffering from delusions. Mm. As if it wasn't bad enough to call up the Almighty on the telephone. He's now attending non-existent committee meetings. Non-existent? There is no such committee. Oh, nonsense. He's been going to it every week for years. Well. Unless. Unless. Unless he's got some other reason. Some disreputable reason for going to work town every week. I can hardly believe Snedden would give any of us the time of day. Never mind give Grace Laughlin a fox that he'd shot. Yeah, I thought Bob was pulling my leg, but uh, no, it's true. Bob saw him do it. And even he's wondering if we haven't been a bit too hard on him. Mind you, there was one moment when I kind of wondered that myself. It was a... Uh, not long after Jimmy's death and Snedden came into the shop and for one awful moment I thought he was going to make some kind of nasty remark in front of Brian. But he didn't. No. He said he was sorry. And I believed him. You don't think that people will start to have a, a change of heart towards him now, do you? I think one or two have already. But I must confess I'm not going to find it that easy. <laughs> I can well understand your reservations, Isabel. But there's a basic concept in Christianity that no one is beyond redemption. Perhaps we should include Mr. Snedden in that. <sighs> Aye. What's the matter with him? He's asleep. Well, I can hear he's not dead. What are you going to do about him? Leave him. Maybe dust him occasionally. If Fiona sees him in that state, she'll go potty. Fiona, of all people, should know why he's like that. Poor soul's been up half the night looking after her child. Still refusing to look after the baby? Aye, and Archie's still playing the nanny. Uh, there's no justice, eh? Alice. Aye. There she is, dying to have a baby. And her ladyship's got one she doesn't want. Anyway, what does she want to see us about? Well, I hope it's to tell us she's getting a factor in to run the estate so that she can take proper care of her child. But that's probably too much to hope for. Well, if you can get Archie back from the arms of Morpheus, I'd like a word with you all through here, please. Archie! Mm. What? What's up? Fiona wants us. Oh, it's a you. The best way to tell bad news is to tell it quickly. You may remember that my mother gifted me this estate to avoid paying inheritance tax. Clever, that. The tax would have ruined the estate since the capital to pay it could only be raised by selling. What a number of catch is that? Ah, oh, but uh, since she did There's more it... to it than that, Archie. My mother would have to have lived for seven years after the gift to avoid the tax. So, the estate will have to be sold? Very much against my will, but I'm afraid of no choice. Bob, the rest of the estate workers will be notified officially, and in writing, of course. I'd appreciate if you'd prepare the ground, lessen the shock a bit. Aye, I'll do that. Thanks. I, I don't think I could go through all that again. Fiona, I... I'm speaking for everyone when I say I'll, I'm sorry it's come to this. That's not just self-interest. I appreciate that, Bob. Well, uh, there's uh, not much more to be said, is there? No, not much. <laughs> What are you doing 
here at this time? Just thinking. Oh, thinking is it? <laughs> well, you better watch out and not overdo it. You might strain something. The only thing likely to be strained around here is my patience. Oh, what's wrong? Fiona's selling the estate. Selling? But why? Death duties, inheritance tax. If she doesn't sell, she won't be able to pay it. She was near to tears when she told us. Bob, that's awful. Poor Fiona. I mean, first her mother's death and now this. No, but at least she'll come away with something. What do you mean? I mean, it could leave us right out in the cold. No job, no home. But how? Well, I mean, well, whoever buys the estate is still going to need a gamekeeper, aren't they? Well, that depends whether whoever buys it wants to run it as an estate. And why else would anyone buy it? People buy land for all sorts of reasons, Alice. As an investment or a, or a tax loss, or even to plant trees. There are big tax incentives in that nowadays. But even if the buyer does want to run it as an estate, there's nothing to say he'd want to keep me on as gamekeeper. Well, it might never come to that. No, but it could. Oh, Bob. Just when it looked as though things were finally coming right for us. Look, I'm sorry I snapped. Oh, sure, I feel sorry for Fiona. She's worked hard to save this place and she's failed through no fault of her own. But I'm also scared, Alice. For us. For the future. I'm just telling you what happened, Morag. He gave me the fox, just like that. Well, there's nothing just like that about Snedden. Oh, he'll have worked it all out in advance. But why would he do a thing like that? He'll be after something. That's what Dougal thinks. Of course, he's... I had a suspicious mind. But what do you think? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it only goes to show what I've always said. There's some good in the worst of us. Oh, I'm Oreg. Still got time for idle chatter and the day not halfway over. It's no wonder your affairs are in such a sorry mess. At least I can manage to settle my debts. Who says I can't? Oh, so you'll have paid your vet's bill then? If it's any of your business, I haven't. Actually, I was thinking of asking Mr. Forsyth for some more time. You'll do nothing of the kind. You've had plenty of time already to pay. And the man has got to live just like the rest of us. And just what am I supposed to pay him with? How about money? You must have heard of it. Oh, I have heard of it all right. Just haven't seen a lot of it this while back. Well, you'll just have to sell something then, won't you? Like what? This is a sheep farm, isn't it? Mother, the yows are in lamb. I'd be daft to sell them just now. No, no. The vet will just have to wait. <laughs> So, Snedden's become flavour of the month in Glendara. Hardly that. So, it makes you wonder. What? Well, he might not have been so bad if we hadn't had this, you know, this suspicion of income out in Glendara. Yes, well, I'd still like to see the man an outgoer. <laughs> Nobody disliked him because he was a stranger. They disliked him because he was such a bad lot. Here. And you heard. But it's about Snedden we have. No, no. It's Fiona. She's selling the estate. I'm not sure that what we're doing is right, Mrs. Mack. Of course it is. We're doing it for his own good, aren't we? That makes it right. I don't think we should be going through his personal papers. I mean, he could be back at any minute. I've got to find out what he's been up to. The mind boggles, Mrs. Mack. I mean, what could he have been up to in Octarn all these evenings? Up to no good, and that's for certain. I suppose you're right. Look, he's been caught out in a lie, and he would only tell a lie if he'd got something to hide. Aye, but what? I don't know, but I intend to find out one way or another. Ah, oh, Mr. Murdoch. Minister, you'll have stopped round to discuss next Sunday, I suppose. Aye, that's right, next Sunday. Um, what about next Sunday? Mr. Parker, of course. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I <clears throat> understand he'll be taking the service. He has been kind enough to agree. And I should be all right by the following Sunday. Only if you take the advice of qualified medical advisors and stop going out for walks on days like these. It was well worth the risk, Mrs. Mack. It seems to me that the age of miracles has not yet passed. You've uh, seen a miracle? 
if not actually seen, then heard of something very like one. Mm -hmm. To do with archangels, was it? Uh, certainly not. It seems that Mr. Snedden made a very kind gesture to Mrs. Lachlan, and that several attitudes in the estate are changing towards him in consequence. Oh, I don't care how kind it be to other folk. Be assured that my attitude towards that man will never, ever change. Nor will mine. I think I can accept those assurances. What did he do, anyway? He shot a fox and gave it to Mrs. Lachlan. It was a very kind gesture, although the fox might be forgiven for taking the opposite view. Surprise that people let a wee thing like that influence them. Thank goodness I've got some sense of proportion. Come, come. Look, that man Snedden tried to steal fish that didn't belong to him. He tried to put Inverdarach off his farm, terrified Sheila Ramsay, and to boot him was very, very rude to me. He has also suggested I indulge in poaching. A fearsome catalogue of wrongdoing, and I agree that the last almost puts him beyond the pale of human compassion. But we must remember... Remember what? that there is more rejoicing in heaven over the return of one lost sheep. You know the rest. The Bible only refers to lost sheep, Minister, not black ones. You've brought shame on this house. And not for the first time. Mother, will you stop nagging at me? I can't afford to pay the man, not just yet. He has to be paid. Then who's going to do it? My hens and my goats. There's times I think I should send her away for treatment. How can her hens and goats pay the vet's bill? Oh, you great thick slab of mutton. It's obvious. She's going to sell them. What? She wouldn't, would she? Oh, Mother. Mother, I, I can't let you do it. I, I know the one lot are nothing but a nuisance, and the others are dirty, smelly creatures. But I know how much they mean to you. I, and I won't have you part with them just because of me. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you selling your hens and goats to pay the vet's bill. I've no intention of doing any such thing. You haven't? How much do you think I would get for them? <laughs> not very much, right enough. Their value is in the money that they make for me. Not very much, maybe, but oh, it soon mounts up when you put it away every week. There's enough in here to pay Robert's bill. You mean... You'd give me your savings. Oh, no, no, I'll lend you the money. I'll expect to get it back, though. With interest, Mrs. Laughlin. Will you shut up? With interest. Well? I don't have much choice, do I? Uh, I'll pay you back as soon as I can. Now, while you're about it, you might buy your mother some more hens and goats. She seems to do better with them than you do with your yows. <laughs> Inheritance tax, I think it's called. You remember, Sorry said something about it the day of the funeral. He obviously saw it coming. I don't understand. Why should she have to pay money because her mother died? I mean, that's like a tax on death. Which is what they used to call it, death duty. I don't know, Isabel. It seems crazy to me. Like the powers that be don't like you passing on the fruits of your success to your family. It's why Mrs. Cunningham had to sell for the Germans when her father died. Aye, but she got the estate back. Yeah, well, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it seems unlikely it would happen twice. I think it's really sad. Not just for Fiona, but for the whole village. Mm. Everybody on the estate. Well, it's more than sad. I mean, a lot of people could be out of work. Depends on who buys it, and that could be bad news for us. We'd still have our lease, though. Well, for the time being, yes, but... If people lose their jobs in a place like this, they move away. <laughs> and the longest-running lease in the world isn't going to save the shop if it hasn't got any customers. Is that really necessary? If I succumb, Minister, who would look after you? No, no, no. The whole object of the exercise is to get you back on your feet as soon as possible. After all, we don't want you missing another meeting. Another meeting? Of the Ecumenical Committee. Oh, yes, yes, the Ecumenical Committee. That would be unfortunate. Well, why you can be bothered tripsing into Octan for that, I don't know. The very important business of Christians of different persuasions holding regular dialogues, Mrs. Mack. I suppose so. But why anybody from Glendara who want to go there for any other reason beats me? I think of being a trifle hard on the place. Octan may not have a nightlife of the first order, but there's more than you'll find here. 
A lot of art. It has a cinema, disco dancing, and public houses. Some of them with live entertainment, I'm told. Oh, and I'm sure you don't go to Oak Town for any of those reasons. <laughs> Hardly. I'm a bit uh, long in the tooth for disco dancing. Mm -hmm. Just business that takes you there, hmm? uh, Well, uh, I might see a friend occasionally. A friend? Uh, that is to say, uh, I might see a friend if I had a friend to see. That's the worst part of it over. At the end of the day, everyone in the estate will know that it's the only selling. I can't help feeling that I've let Mum, everyone down very badly. Dad, you came. You know what day this is? Yes. Yeah, I don't mean the day of the week. It's, uh, what? Our wedding anniversary. Your mother's and mine. And we were to marry. Again next month. Oh, Dad, I'm sorry. I completely forgot it. I'm so selfish. I'm sorry. <laughs> 